Well, just, uh, you know, a, a quick one here. Do the reference you're making to uh, full disclosure, shouldn't that come with asset declaration because one would say that these people i mean being a governor is not a full-time well it's a full-time job but there will have been other things that you were doing before you became governor so shouldn't we be looking at uh asset declaration and perhaps taxing based on assets is that what you're suggesting the tax law does not tax based on asset tax based on income so what that means is that if you have an asset that you are not generating income you're not supposed to pay tax on that and that too is one of the things that we we that should be examined because we are looking for how to grow the economy of uh, the country but some of the taxes that companies pays in nigeria are actually based on the asset not on what they generate yes that is called minimum tax and that provision is long overdue if we want to um, improve grow this economy then some of those obnoxious provisions in the tax law which the tax policy actually highlighted highlighted that some of these changes should be made so you are not supposed to pay tax on your asset or your capital because what that means is that if I have to borrow money from the bank to establish uh, uh, an industry or a company and the first, uh, after four years, and I'm not making enough profit, I'll start paying taxes based on minimum tax. And what that means is that they look at my net asset and what that actually means I'm paying tax on the loan that I collected to acquire those assets. Now the fundamental issue here is that we have the issue of inequality. That takes us to uh, the third step which is the issue of uh, corruption because Corruption is the one bringing this full disclosure. But just before you go to the next, uh, the next item which you would like to discuss but permit me to button there. Uh, before you go to the next item, you know, you say that we, you don't pay tax on assets. So then, let's just take the, uh, the example of the average individual who perhaps earns a salary, maybe owns a few stocks here and there. Most of the taxes that are paid, you know, by that individual will most likely be deducted from source. Uh, if you're getting dividends from your from the companies you've invested in, the taxes are deducted from there. How do you then collate all of this tax, assuming you were to declare them? If if you earn dividends, you are supposed to also have what is called a dividend warrant. So in your tax returns, you should disclose that you earn a dividend warrant. And by the law, the Nigerian uh, the personal income tax. Once your dividend has suffered tax at source, it becomes the final tax. But it should be disclosed in your tax, uh, tax returns. So, uh, the, the third okay. item I want to... Uh, maybe we'll have less than a minute to go to break, but before you go to that third item, so what happens to companies or people who establish maybe sole proprietorships and, uh, or even a company and the first one, two years, they barely have made any profit, and then they are paying taxes. What happens in that case? Yeah, that's, that is because that is the way the tax law is for now. And that's why the new tax policy actually recommends that some of those uh, provisions should be changed because it's not encouraging people to establish businesses. Because, in fact, the way the tax law is now, when, when you start a business, you actually pay double taxation in the first year. And that is called commencement rule. So all that, the new tax policy, uh, the, the, the requirement, the, the, there are, um, um, what do they call them, there are uh, representation made to uh, the executive to change uh, those provisions because if we want to encourage people to set up businesses, SMEs and all that, then they should not be overburdened with 
taxation. What if people argue that, well, going by those slips that were released by them, if their taxes are deducted as source, to that extent, they can't say they have paid adequate tax. Would that be wrong? Yeah, based on those slips, if that's the only income they've earned, yes, yeah, so you say that they've paid their adequate tax. But the question is that, are you saying that they don't have other incomes outside their statutory emoluments? But perhaps they don't. Well, that is a question for uh, another day. And as uh, oh, you don't believe that they don't have um, as journalists, I expect that they don't maybe have you anything else but the government work that they do. Okay. You don't believe that? You you're okay? Even at, at that, uh, we know that uh, most most uh, chief executive or people in government have other sources of income other than their statutory income. Now that, that brings us to the issue of uh, corruption, because fighting corruption and all that, that's what brought about transparency, disclosure of all that. The question is, what will you really consider as the problem of Nigeria? We know corruption has been on the lips of everyone. But as a futurist, I don't think corruption or corruption is not the problem of Nigeria. Why? Corruption is actually a symptom of. So you need to now look for the disease. Why is corruption pervasive? Then you say people are greedy. Why are people greedy? Is because there is bad leadership. Now, this bad leadership, where are they actually coming from? They are also coming from society. Can there be bad leadership from tax uh, collectors? It cut across all board. So, you talk about bad leadership, where are these leaders coming from? Or where are these public office holders coming from? They are coming from the society. And the society is a system. So, what that means is that you have bad leadership from a failed system. And why do we have a failed system in Nigeria? is because there is no love amongst all of us. And why is there no love? It's because of one word, inequality. So the problem of Nigeria is actually inequality. To, for us to solve the corruption problem, we have to address the issue of inequality. Okay, we, we have to anchor at that point. Uh, apologies, that's how far we can go. Uh, Chris David is a futurist, tax consultant, and also speaks on leadership, and congrats, you now have your PhD. Well, that's the show today. Thank you all for watching. I'm Chamberlain Uso. Thanks for watching. I am Gimba Umar. Why does it feel like Friday? Thank you.